Hello everybody, my name is Mark, and yes, it is time for me to do yet another video. Reason being is because I am at a crossroads with my money. And again, what makes my videos different is that I talk about my real money in my real account. This is not a paper trading account, this is my real account. So uh, first to start off, let me go to my channel and just show you just how well my Bank of America strategy has been working for me. So it's kind of funny. I'm about ready to do a video of my other videos here. So this is my channel. And uh, pulling up here and you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to click on my stock review video from three weeks ago. And uh, so let me do that and pull this up. Okay. Okay, so here this was from three weeks ago. You see that my money was at $13,304.26. Now, let me backspace. And now I'm going to go from my video from two weeks ago. It's a weekly stock review number two, June 2017 two weeks ago you can only see part of it but this is this is what I'm clicking on that little part right there so let me do that okay so here you see that my money's gone up a little bit it went up from three thousand three hundred whatever dollars to I'm sorry thirteen thousand three hundred three thousand yeah thirteen thousand to thirteen thousand six hundred so I went up a little bit now let me go to the next video and this this now I'm on this video here so let me click on that Okay, so this is my weekly stock review from about a week ago, and this time it went down by about 100 bucks. So I'm at $13,537.77. Now, let me go to my next video, and now I'm clicking on this one, and this one was just from four days ago, my video when I made like $30 on some put options that I sold. So let me click on that. And here you see that my money is slowly growing. It's now I'm up to $13,732.69. Now, backspace yet one more time. And this was from yesterday, just a day ago. Collecting my dividends. And there you go. You see my money just continues to grow and grow. Now, I'm not making, you know, hundreds or even thousands of dollars every single day but slowly but surely you know week after week my money is slowly growing and I use the option caller strategy I like Bank of America with an option caller strategy you can buy any stock you want and then you buy some put options just in case the stock goes down I bought four put options on Bank of America for $22 strike price so that if the worst happens there's a recession I can sell Bank of America at $22 a share if Bank of America drops to $10 a share I have $22 put options and then I sell call options to pay for those and so I go to sleep every night knowing that my money is safe and you saw how much money that I'm making how well I'm doing I'm up $500 just since April that's when I opened all this up so now I'm at a crossroads here and let me go back to my Ameritrade account here and here is my Ameritrade account. This is today, July the 3rd, the day before Independence Day. And I had another good day. Bank of America uh, is all the way up to $24.68. Now let me go to my transactions so you can see where all of this began for me. So I'm going to put in BAC and I'm going to go back to April. Oop, wrong, wrong box. Let's go back to April, hit the view box. And now we go down and here is everything that I have done. So the first thing I did was all on on the 19th. And then and I bought 400 shares of Bank of America at $22.93 right there. $22.93 and then I bought four put options for $205 a contract and then I sold four call options at $42 taking in a credit of $157.95 so that gets deducted off of the money I spent on the put options and all of this was on the 19th the 19th and the 19th of April and here it is now July the 3rd so in about two and a half months I've made I'm up about $500 as you saw uh, as I did a quick review of 
my other videos and now I am at a crossroads I'm at two crossroads okay and I'll show you the two crossroads the first crossroads that I am at is if you click on Bank of America here and you go to earnings okay right there next earning announcement July 18 2017 now I'm going to tell you that when earnings announcements happen stocks like to go up and down and usually stock will go up or down up or down 1% or 2% if there is some excuse me if there is some unexpected news announcements then it could go up big or down big you know 4% or 5% and in the case of Bank of America 4 or 5% that could be a dollar or more right and so the second cross that's the first crossroad the second crossroad is these call contracts right there okay these are my call options and uh, let me go back to my account and uh, go back to the BAC here and uh, hit the view button I did it in April hit the view button and so I sold those four call options right here for forty two dollars okay now that's what they were worth on April the 19th now let's go back to my account so remember that number forty two dollars now here are my call options well you can see they are again worth forty two dollars per contract so I've broken even on those call options okay put options are down a little bit that's to be expected but the call options are paying for those so I don't care about that okay the whole point of the put options is just in case Bank of America goes below twenty do excuse me twenty two dollars a share I have that protection okay so the crossroads is that these call options right here expire in 18 days okay so what exactly does that mean when the call options expire that means that if Bank of America is below let me let me click this on again if Bank of America is below twenty five dollars then uh, excuse me I'm, I'm getting all tongue twisted here if Bank of America is below twenty five dollars then I have nothing to worry about but if it's above twenty five dollars then what's gonna happen let's say Bank of America goes up to twenty six dollars then what's gonna happen is I will automatically sell all four hundred of my Bank of America shares at twenty five dollars a share now I don't really mind that because if you excuse me if you remember I bought 400 Bank of America shares at $22.95 okay so if I did sell uh, my 400 shares at $25 then that would be a $2.05 profit per share which would exactly pay for the money that I spent on the put option so that would not be a big deal but still it is a crossroads so I have a decision to make about what I'm going to do with my money based on those two things crossroad number one is earnings earnings is coming up on July the 18th and crossroads number two are these call options are getting ready to expire so I have a few possible decisions that I can make number one if I want to hang on to my Bank of America shares then I could just buy these back right now and if I wanted to do that I would click on the calls I click on the buy and then I go to action and I go buy to close okay I wouldn't go buy to open I go buy to close why because I sold to open the call options and by selling to open that's when you take in a credit and so I would buy to close I would put in my four contracts and then I put in the limit order 42 I would it's only a one dollar spread so I would just probably do it at the at the ask price and then there you go I would be spending hundred and sixty eight dollars so I would lose a little bit on commission but overall I would almost break even I would be way up on my shares of Bank of America because uh, let me click on the Bank of America here let me close this part out because Bank of America is way up to here and if Bank of America went over $25 I'd be way up so I could just close them out okay and then I would sell half of my B of A shares okay that way I would keep some profit and then I would wait until after earnings blows over okay and I would do all this like the day before earnings announcement okay I would close out those call options and I would excuse me sell half of my shares 
so that if Bank of America did go up or down a dollar, if it went up a dollar, I would continue to make money. And uh, oops, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so going back to my account, I would continue to make money because remember, $25 a share was my break-even price. So if Bank of America hits $25 or if it's near $25 and I sold half my shares, then if Bank of America went up, let's say, to $25.50 or $26, then I would just continue to make money and I wouldn't have to worry about call options selling my share shares. And by the way, there's terminology to that. If you're selling put options and the options get used up, then the shares get put to you. The terminology for calls is my shares would get called away. That's what it means and that's what would happen to me if I still own these four contracts. And notice it has a little negative there, right? That's, that's so you know that you have short sold those, which simply means you're an op option seller, okay? And that's what would happen to me if Bank of America went up over $25 and then on July 21st, I still own those shorted call options, then I would automatically sell my shares at $25 a share. And that's one option. I could do that. I could just let the things get called away and get out. And whatever these put options right here are worth is my total profit in the, uh, what is it, April in the two and a half months. Okay. But option number two, if I wanted to stay in, then I would just buy back these four call options and then I would sell half of my Bank of America shares, wait till bank, wait till the earnings blows over, and then uh, get back in. Uh, the nice thing about getting out of a position is that you can always get back in. Okay, so that's option number two. I have a third option too. I could just keep the 400 shares and buy some more put options. And I, what, if I wanted to do that, I would go to the option chain, and then I would look at how much the options cost for that. 18 days right there in the July 21st because that's when the earnings happen. So uh, I would look at maybe these put options right here. I would want to get the more expensive put options. These ones down down here, uh, the, those ones down there, you know. And the reason is, is because when you buy, let's say the $25 put option, in order to know how much uh, the stock would have to move to make money. You simply take the $25, you subtract the premium here. Uh, is he going to let me do it? You subtract the premium, and that tells you what price Bank of America needs to go down in order for you to make a profit. Okay. So that's a third option I can do. And these $25 put options are only $70. Okay. Uh, who knows what they'll be. In a week from now, or I could even go go to the 2550s or the 26s because I'm again remember I am up several hundred dollars on the these and just for kicks let's see exactly how much money I am up on all of this right now. So Bank of America is at twenty four dollars and sixty eight cents a share. Okay, my Dollar cost average was $22.95. So $22.95, uh, I'm sorry, $24.68 minus $22.95 would be 180 something. No, 100 and what would that, what would that be? $174. Four okay, so $174 per share. So 174 I have 400 shares, so 174 times 400 would be about $500, okay? Now, I spent $205 on the put options, okay? Put options have dropped in value, okay? So they're down to, looks like $138, so 205 minus 138. Uh, let's see, what would that be? 50, 65, 130, 260. So I'm up 500, down 260, giving me a net profit of 240. And the call options are about even, minus commission. So I'm up about $200. So if I wanted to buy some put options, then I would only want to spend about $200. Okay, so what I could do is I could buy these $25 put options three of them. I could get three of them and spend $210 and that would hold me over until, uh, until the, uh, I'm sorry, until earnings. Golly, I'm having, I'm having brain aneurysm here. So I would, uh, buy back the, these call options. Okay. Go back to my account. I would buy these back, close those out. Okay. 
buy to close those and then get those three put options and then I would just hang on to those until after the earnings so those are the three things that I can do and then the fourth thing I can do is just do nothing because my strategy is working like a charm I could just hold and then just let happen what happens that's a fourth thing I can do there might be some other things I could do too uh, I tend to think about this stuff frequently I mean it's my money I care about my money I try really hard to make money and my option caller strategy works like a charm uh, I'm going to constantly do videos on option callers and I'm going to use this strategy probably until the day I die so that I can one day die rich just like I think everybody everybody can die rich you know nobody has to die broke we can all die rich if we are careful with with our money and so forth so anyways uh, that's it for this video I'm at a crossroads here I haven't totally made up my mind what I'm gonna do uh, I do need to talk a little bit actually before I end this video I need to talk about option Greeks okay I am an option seller I have sold four of these call options and I want to show you what option Greeks are because when you are an option seller okay you literally get paid to do nothing okay so here I'm going to go to Greeks analytical view the chain and this looks all confusing but I'll explain it really quickly you can see right there there's all these dates okay this one right here July 17th that's three days from now this one here at the end that's January 18th 2019 that's like two years from now or a year and a half it's uh, what July well, I'm going to look at this July 21st because that's what my call options are expired that I sold. So let's click on that. And these are the call options. And I sold the $25 call options. And these right here are the Greek values. Okay. Now the one that I'm going to talk about is this one right here. It's called theta and it stands for time. Okay. And you see there are little values there, right? 1.2. Uh, 1.3 and so on and so on well my $25 call has a theta value of $1.50 so what does that mean that means that every single day that I hold on to those four call options that I sold or I should say that I shorted I get a dollar and fifty cents just for doing nothing okay why is that I'll, I'll show you why because if you look at these options, let me go back to Bank of America. Let me go back to the July 21st, $25 call option. Okay. Notice how much they're worth. They are worth $42 in premium. Now, if I go shorter, if I go to 11 days, look, they drop. Now they're only worth $25. Now, if I go to four days, they're only worth $11. Okay. Now, in four days from now, these things, if Bank of America uh, is below $25, and right now it is below $25, if it stays below $25 four days from now, then guess what? These options are going to be worth $0, and they become null and void. That's the whole idea of these contracts. They become worth $0. So if you are, if you bought these options, let's say you wanted to buy some stock options on some call options on Bank of America, you'd only have to spend $11 per contract. I mean, if you had $100, you could buy 10 of these things almost, nine of them, right? And then if Bank of America went up to, let's say, $26, you'd make $900 on a $100 investment. But Bank of America would have to go up that high in the next four days, you know. But there are some gung-ho people out there that like to invest this way. They like to go in big or go home, right? And you could do that. And you could make a ton load of money investing like that. But you could also lose your shirt because let's say you had $100 and you did that. And then four days from now, Bank of America is below the $25. Well, then guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You're out 100 bucks. okay? So if you're an option buyer, okay, then that time decay thing, that theta, that is not your friend. That is your enemy because you own the option and you spent money to buy that option. But if you let me go back to this Greek here and let me go back to this uh, $25 thing here. So again, if you bought that option, then this 
theta thing right here is not your friend, it's your enemy because you are spending money and every day that goes by you are losing a dollar and fifty cents in value and I showed you that when you click on those how much uh, premium you lose in those things, right? And the premium's right there, 41. If we go shorter to, to a July 14th, they're 24. And if we go to July 7th, they're only $11. So every day that goes by, stock options lose money in value, okay? And if you're an option buyer, then you that's a bad thing. But if you're the option seller, then that's a good thing. It's almost like you're a landlord, and if you buy a house and then you rent it out, you're making rent. But if you are the renter, then that's a bad thing, right? That's kind of the analogy that I use for stock options. So that's why I like to be an option seller. I literally get paid a dollar and fifty cents just to wait. Okay. Now there are other stocks out there that have sky high uh, theta values, and let's see if I can find one. Here's an ETF. This this is the nice ETF nugget. And I have traded this thing a ton of times. I've done videos showing you the luck that I've had with this. Now I'm going to go to the option Greeks and let's see what we get here. Okay, so here we go. This, these ones. Uh, let, let me let's go out a couple of weeks here. Uh, five dollars. That's not that great, really. That's only five dollars. Three dollars. Three dollars. Hmm. Let's see, $6, $3, $5, $4. I guess you have to go in real close. So here's one right here on Nugget. This is for the 2750. Nugget is trading at 2807. Uh, if you were to be an option seller and you sold this 2750 call, you'd get a nice load of premium. You'd get $130, and that's because this implied volatility is so darn high. Implied volatility has a lot to do with the, with the value of options, but the theta you'd be getting nine dollars and sixty cents every day so anyways that's a little bit on options greeks here uh and i did want to do a video on the option greeks because you have a choice on how you want to make money when you are buying and selling options if you're the option buyer then you're going to make money on the movement of the stock when you are the option seller you want to make money off of time and just sitting around doing nothing Okay, as long as the price of the stock stays above the price that's written into the calls or the puts, you can sit around and make money. I think it's a great strategy. It's one that I use. I did a video on four put options that I sold. I'll show you real quick again, just in case you haven't watched that video. Let me put in BAC and let me go back just like a short little month ago because I, it just happened and it's right there. Here it is. Uh, nope, that's not it. Yeah, here it is, right? So I did this on in June, just like a, a, a couple weeks ago. On June 22nd, I sold four Bank of America put options, $21 for 40 bucks. Took in $149.96. And then in, on June 27th, I bought them back at a cheaper price, making a whopping $31 in a total of five days. No, it's not a million dollars, but if you think about it, if I can make $30 a week, 30 times 52 weeks a year would be $1,500, and $1,500 would be more than 10% return on my money in a year, okay? And you're not going to get 10% return in the bank, I can tell you that, okay? But I'm I'm already up pretty good. You, you saw uh, videos. I'm up, you know, like... $500 and so I'm, I'm doing pretty well here and so I'm pretty happy with my position things are going well for me but I am at the crossroads earnings are coming up and these call options are going to expire so I got some decisions to make uh, I will keep uh, you the viewer updated and uh, as far as how I'm doing what decisions I need to make and so that's it for this video thank you for watching and I will see you again in another video probably very soon since these uh, days, these decisions are coming up rather quickly. So have a good day. Thank you.